The last topic we need to cover dealing with momentum is elastic collisions. So we've already seen that elastic collisions are where you've got two objects that are going to collide and then bounce off each other. In other words, they have two different speeds before and two different speeds after the collision. The main idea from elastic, sorry, elastic collisions that we're going to now apply is that kinetic energy is conserved. So kinetic energy is conserved with elastic collisions. So because kinetic energy is conserved, we know that 1 half m1 v1 a squared plus 1 half m2 v2 a squared equals 1 half m1 v1 b squared plus 1 half m2 v2 b squared. And all I did there was say that the total kinetic energy of the system before is equal to the total kinetic energy of the system after. We also know that because of conservation of momentum, m1v1a plus m2v2a equals m1v1b plus m2v2b. Using these two concepts, so conservation of kinetic energy and conservation of momentum, um, and doing a whole bunch of algebra, ending up with substituting and square roots and all that fun stuff. So after much algebra, we arrive at a very simple equation. And if you want to see the algebra, I'll be happy to sit down and show you, but I doubt you care. So after much algebra, we end up with V1A minus V2A equals V2B minus V1B. So V1A refers to the speed of object 1 before the collision. V2A is the speed of object 2 before the collision. Sorry, velocities. And then the Bs refer to after. So this is for elastic collisions. Why do we need that? Because we're going to end up with two equations and two unknowns, and this is the second equation we'll be able to use in order to solve. So I'll do two examples. Um, you don't have to watch both if you don't feel like it, just to show you how these elastic collisions work out and how this equation applies. This is an equation that I will give you on the board for the test. Um, but just know that after a lot of algebra combining this equation, conservation of kinetic energy, and this equation for conservation of momentum, we arrive here. So first example, and this is in your packet, it says elastic collisions, examples at the top. Is there a 0 0.060 kilogram tennis ball moving with a speed of 2.50 meters per second, has a head-on collision with a 0 0.90 kilogram ball initially moving away from it at a speed of 1 meter per second? Assuming a perfectly elastic collision, what is the speed and direction of each ball after the collision? So you need to draw both balls. So we have the tennis ball, I'm going to call that object 1. Moving to the right, the way I'm drawing my diagram, and then we have the um, other ball moving away from it. So it's moving away also to the right, so they're moving in the same direction, but it's moving away from it. And this is A. And then they're going to collide and bounce off each other. We don't necessarily know which way they're moving, but we do know that they're bouncing away from each other. So we don't know. They could both be in the positive direction. They could both be in the negative direction. They could be going one or the other. This is the one time where your diagram and the direction of the speed lines might not necessarily agree with what you solve. As long as we set up in A that this is going on, so tennis ball two, I'm sorry, ball two is moving away from the tennis ball, um, they're going to bounce. We don't know what way they bounce, though. So this is the one time where the diagram might not agree with what we find at the end. So given information, I'm calling the tennis ball 1, so mass 1 is 0 0.060 kilograms. V1A is 2.50 meters per second. Mass 2 is 0 0.090 kilograms. And V2A is also positive, 1.00 meters per second. And what are we looking for? The speed and direction of each, so essentially velocity. So we're looking for V1B and V2B. This is a perfectly elastic collision, so we know that momentum is conserved, kinetic energy is conserved. 
We also know that V1A, so from those two principles, minus V2A equals V2B minus V1B. So V1A we know, let's just rearrange this, V1A minus V2A plus V1B, I'm isolating V2B, equals V2B. Okay, we also know from conservation of momentum that M1V1A plus M2V2A equals M1V1B plus M2V2B. I know from up here that V2B equals all of this, so I'm going to substitute this in for that. So we get M1V1A plus M2V2A equals M1V1B plus M2 V1A minus V2A plus V1B. So all I did was substitute in this expression for V2B. I'm going to distribute out that M2. The only unknown in this whole long thing is V1B. So let's distribute, isolate, and then solve. M1V1A plus M2V2A equals M1V1B plus M2V1A minus M2V2A plus M2V1B. I'm getting all of these V1Bs alone. M1V1A plus M2V2A minus M2V1A plus M2V2A equals V1B M1 plus M2. So all algebra. Put in the numbers. So my mass one, you know, I'm just going to go to another page. So my mass one, 0 0.06 kilograms times V1A, 2.5 meters per second, plus mass 2, 0 0.09 kilograms, times V2A, 1 meter per second, minus mass 2, 0 0.09 kilograms, times V2A, sorry, V1A, so 2.5, meters per second plus plus 0 0.09 kilograms times 1 meter per second equals M1 plus M2 so 0 0.06 kilograms plus 0 0.09 kilograms V1B and this whole long thing comes out to a nice even round 0 0.7 meters per second for V1B. It comes out to a positive number, so it's moving to the right. Okay, now looking for V2B. Well, we know from the very beginning that V1A minus V2A plus V1B equaled V2B. So 2.5 meters per second minus 1 meter per second plus 0 0.7 meters per second equals V2B. 2.5 minus 1 is 1 1.5. 1 1.5 plus 0.7 is 2.2 meters per second equaling V2B. This is also positive, so this is also moving to the right. With round, we're going to say that V1B equals 0 0.70 meters per second, right? And V2B equals 2.2 meters per second, right? Again, I know it's a lot of algebra. You just have to be careful to make sure everything's matching in terms of your objects, one, two, and what they're doing before, after, and direction. 
Um, I'll do the next example. If you feel comfortable, then you can stop watching now. But if you want to see the next example, um, keep on watching. Okay, our second example, a softball of mass 0 0.220 kilograms that is moving with a speed of 5.5 meters per second collides head-on and elastically with another ball initially at rest. Afterward, it is found that the incoming ball had bounced backward with a speed of 3.7 meters per second. Calculate the velocity of the target ball after the collision and the mass of the target ball. So here we have our softball, I'm going to call that one. And the second ball, call that two, initially at rest. And the softball is initially moving. Softball bounces back, target ball moves, A, B. Given information, we know that M1 is 0 0.220 kilograms. V1A is 5.5 meters per second. Uh, v one B is negative three point seven meters per second, and V two A is zero. It starts from rest. And given all of that, we are looking for the velocity, so V two B, and the mass M two of the target ball. So using Elastic collisions, what we know, V1A minus V2A equals V2B minus V1B. V2A starts at rest. So V1A, doesn't matter if I isolate V2 or V1. I'm just going to isolate V2. So V1A plus V1B equals V2B. We also know M1 V1A plus M2 V2A equals M1 V1B plus M2 V2B. This is zero. We can substitute in for V2B, so we get M1 V1A equals M1 V1B plus M2, V1A plus V1B. We are looking for M2, so I'm just going to isolate M2 since that is the only unknown in all of this. So we get M1 V1A minus M1 V1B over V1A plus V1B equals M2. So my mass 1, 0 0.220 kilograms, times V1A, 5.5 meters per second, minus mass 1, 0 0.220 kilograms, times V1B, negative 3.7 meters per second, over V1A plus V1B, so 5.5 meters per second plus a negative 3.7 meters per second equals M2. And this will come out to 1.124 keeps on going kilograms for M2. Uh, this is two sig figs. So M2 is approximately 1.1 kilograms. And then we're looking for also the velocity of the ball after the collision. Well, we already had V1A and V1B, and that equaled V2B. So this is 5.5 meters per second plus a negative 3.7 meters per second, equaling V2B. And this comes out to an even 1.8 meters per second. So V2B equals, no rounding here, 1.8 meters per second. Because it's positive, it's moving to the right. This is right. Uh, so pretty simple. Um, it is substitution, but again, the two equations are always going to be the same. Your conservation of momentum, and then that equation with the V1A minus V2A equaling V2B minus V1B. And you will have both of those equations on a test.